Morning guys, it is 3.35 a.m. and we're off to the tidal bathing pools in St. Peter's Ward. Yeah, we're feeling pretty ropey, but I'm quite excited about this shot. We had a look at it yesterday and as long as the tide is high enough, I think we should get quite a good shot this morning. Because we've got a few clouds on the horizon as well, so fingers crossed. The bathing pools at La Valette were built in 1844. At each high tide, the pools are topped up with seawater as the sea rushes in over the railings, apparently. Just walking down to the bathing pools now, and it looks like the tide is not high enough for it to be lapping over, over the swimming pool. Basically, the ideal conditions are big dramatic skies, massive waves crashing over these railings. Uh, but what we've got is not very many clouds in the sky, Absolutely no waves at all. No movement this, anywhere in yeah, anything. This isn't ideal at all, but let's take some shots anyway. I've scouted around the bathing pools here and I've come across this composition which has some really graphic shapes in it. I've got Castle Cornet in the background and I've got these steps that sort of lead you into the shot. I'm thinking about doing a panorama and probably in black and white. So we've got loads of textures in the foreground and that really lends itself to black and white as well because it brings out all of the detail. I love black and white photography and if there isn't like an amazing sky, I'll always convert it to black and white because I just love a really high contrast black and white. I've been coming here for years and it's just an amazing place to be. You get up at 3.35 in the morning and you think you're gonna be miserable because you're so tired, but it instantly transforms into just having such a cool time, just going around, see what you can find and trying to get a good shot. I know we were after some drama, but this place is just really peaceful at the moment and very tranquil. And I barely moved from the car, I can almost touch it, but this looks awesome. The swimming pool's in the foreground, Perm behind and the nice leading line of the rails just going to the shot. Sometimes you don't have to look hard to find a composition. So this is my second shot, just very simple. Steps, leading line, into the pool and then a nice sky beyond. And this is one of the reasons I love photographing blue arrows that it gives you a good 20, 25 minute window where you can just try out lots of different compositions. So my final shot, because I think the sun is about to come up, is a six minute exposure of just this small area of the swimming pool here. It's quite a minimalist composition. Railings in the foreground, line going round, sark in the distance and then with the six minute exposure, the clouds will be kind of moving along the horizon. I think we have now almost recovered from this morning's hideously early start. We pumped ourselves full of sugar, Haribo, bacon, had a really long nap and we're ready to go. Find something else to photograph. Yeah. So we're going to the German underground hospital. It's sort of really unrenovated, so it'll be like really dark and sort of yeah, dingy. That quite cool. We've just arrived at the German underground hospital, and as you can see, it's pretty bleak. It's so dark. Yeah, it's yeah. a really strange kind of yeah. eerie atmosphere. Apparently, it took three and a half years to build, and they excavated a million square feet of rubble and then it was only in operation for like a few months before the end of the war. Can you imagine just being down here? You've got stalactites just coming from the ceiling. You can hear the droplets of water and everything is damp. It's what, five degrees down here. So it's an amazing it's experience. pretty chilly and it's a weird atmosphere actually. Yeah. What we're gonna do is, a, is a, we're gonna separate. It's quite big down here, isn't it? So yeah. we're gonna separate and then come back and hopefully have just a series of shots that tell the story of this place. For my portfolio of images, I wanted to convey the eerie, almost haunting atmosphere I felt. For a couple of my shots, I used a 10 second timer so that I could be a figure within my images. My placement needed to be backlit, 
so that I appeared as a silhouette and together with a slow shutter speed created an almost ghostly figure. This old bicycle with its deflated tyre propped up against the wall had an incredible atmosphere. Using a small puddle of water on the floor, I could create a small broken up reflection to lead you into the photograph. This room with the steel bed frames really caught my eye. The bed on the left still poised in position for its last patient. I initially focused on the eerie, bleak atmosphere of the underground hospital. The long corridors had a very gloomy and depressing feel, and I felt a dark, contrasty black and white image suited this well. I initially took this photo straight on, being attracted to the symmetry of the room. However, in the interest of telling the disturbing story of this place, I quickly decided this photo had a lot more impact by identifying it as the mortuary that it used to be. It was the unusual details, such as this old fuse box, that then started to grab my attention. One sign I found particularly moving was this one for a cinema. In the height of war, in an underground hospital, it almost seemed like a desperate attempt to cling on to the normality of what life might have been just a few years earlier. As we were leaving the museum, I asked this gentleman if I could take his portrait. I framed him so that I could include the Guernsey flag in the background to show the location. Okay, I've just spotted a fisherman sort of messing around in his boat and I'm going to go and ask him to see if I can photograph him this afternoon. It's a long shot and I'm quite nervous about it but hopefully we can get a shot of a fisherman sort of getting rid of his crabs at the end of the day so let's see if we can do it. I asked him if I could come back this afternoon and photograph him and he said yeah it's absolutely fine. As he was literally leaving he just said yes and he left. So I wasn't that hopeful, but we came back yeah. uh, and we did a little piece, it was amazing. And I got a portrait of him and everything, so hopefully I've got some good shots amongst the chaos. Like a star today. <laughs> it was also just really interesting chatting to him yeah. about his job and the way he was telling us he was the very first scallop fisherman in 1982. Yeah, yeah. So it was really interesting to like have a chat to yeah. him and find out about what he does. You can't just turn up and talk to someone, can you, if you don't have an excuse to do yeah. it. People sort of go, oh right, he wants to take some photos. Yeah. And then you've got an excuse to get in and just do, just talk to him. I think if you're going to photograph someone, they're going to be much more relaxed if you do chat to them. You oh, yeah. try and break the ice and yeah. make them realise that you're not just there because you want to take photos. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. also actually want to find out what they're doing. Three, four, six and half there's a fine balance between when you're photographing and when you're actually talking. Yeah. So you keep going, oh, yep, <laughs> yeah. yep, oh, Mid -conversation, yep. Mid-conversation, you yeah. just suddenly point a hammer <laughs> yeah. in his yeah. face. Yeah, but he was, he was cool though, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he? Was, he was actually he was, he was as good as it gets because he completely ignored the camera. Great. Yeah, really, that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that, and I'm so glad. That. I'm so glad we got the opportunity to do that. <coughs> this is the most demeaning I've felt for quite some time. Psycho bitch. I am on the back of a tandem. I have no control over where we're going. Also, I've got an extendable selfie stick. So the whole thing is extremely cringeworthy. It's quite traumatic, really, isn't it? It is traumatic. Yes.